Did you know scientists recently discovered three new species of giraffe? Like, where were they hiding their giraffes? Okay, so the new giraffe species weren't actually hiding. It's just that historically, scientists had grouped all giraffes into one species. But in their recent scientific paper, a team of scientists argued that giraffes should be grouped into four separate species instead of one. But how do we know whether some individuals belong to one species or many? To answer that question, we have to know what a species is. Most scientists would agree that the definition of a species is the smallest evolutionarily independent population. Let's break that down. A species is a group of individuals that is constantly exchanging genetic material, like through breeding. Scientists call this gene flow. And because there's gene flow in this population, but not with other populations, evolutionary changes that happen in this population don't affect others, and vice versa. That's why it's evolutionarily independent. Okay, practically speaking, how do you tell whether two populations belong to the same species or different ones? There are a few approaches scientists take to do this, which are called species concepts. The biological species concept says, look, if two individuals can mate and produce fertile offspring, then gene flow can occur between their two populations, so they should be considered one species. But it's worth noting that even if two populations can mate, that doesn't mean they actually do it in the wild. So the biological species concept is not a surefire way to delineate species, and it has some practical limitations. Like how do you test it for species that are extinct, or for species that don't mate to reproduce? The morphological species concept is based on morphology, which is the size, structure, shape, or color of an organism. According to this species concept, organisms with similar morphology belong to the same species. This is pretty much the only method we have for distinguishing between extinct species, but it's also used for species today, especially in combination with other species concepts. The morphological species concept also has some practical limitations, like dealing with species with really different male and female morphologies, species with different life stage morphologies, or species with just a lot of variation in a particular trait. The phylogenetic species concept delineates species using a phylogeny, which is the evolutionary tree that depicts the genetic relatedness between individuals or groups. This is the method scientists use to analyze giraffes. They compare genetic sequences from many individual giraffes, and they found that the giraffes clustered into four unique groups, which is the basis for their argument that there are four separate species. One of the tricky parts to this method is that there are different ways to decide which phylogenetic groups deserve to be called their own species, which is why some scientists don't agree that there are four separate species of giraffe. There's been some really interesting discussion about this in the scientific literature, but I don't have time to go into now. So the takeaway is there are different methods to designate a species, and scientists don't always agree with each other. But species designation matters, because conservation laws apply certain legal protections to endangered species, the unit. So it matters how many species of giraffe there are, so we can take specific action to protect them all. <laughs>